Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to harvest spirulina. So it's time to harvest your spirulina when it gets real thick and chunky. Mix up your tank really well and use a seshi stick to measure optical density. This particular batch came in at 1.9 centimeters and I got a pretty good yield from it. Make sure to check the pH. It should be at least 10 for 24 hours. As long as you keep a clean, sterile environment, there shouldn't be any toxic organisms that can live in a high pH environment over 10. If you have a microscope, you can check for any contaminants. In these microscope views, I'm looking at it at 40x, 100x, and 400x, and it looks really good. Step number two is to remove any dead spirulina. I'll link another video that I made showing how to do that. Step three, clear out and clean your space. I'd normally be doing this in my kitchen, but I'm doing it in my room for the sake of this video. Next, gather your harvesting mesh in a clean container to pour into. You'll save the leftover water to pour back into your tank, so don't throw it away. The sodium bicarbonate you initially added to that water is still good, and that's why we're keeping it. The general rule of thumb is to harvest two-thirds and leave one-third of culture in the tank. For the kit I offer at bluegrownlife.com, I keep my container about 70% full and will pour out enough spirulina until I have about two to three inches left in the tank. I just eyeball this. Next, you'll eventually find a setup that's right for you, but all you're doing is pouring through the mesh and catching the water in some other container. The water will be a little green, but you'll catch most of the spirulina in the mesh. Try to get as much of the water out of the spirulina and into your clean container. Step seven is to pour the water back into your tank. After that, rinse the spirulina with filtered water to remove the sodium bicarbonate from the spirulina you harvested. If you don't rinse the spirulina with filtered water, it's still alkaline and it's not something that you can eat right away. So after rinsing, you can dispose of that water. Some suggest rinsing with a 1% salt solution to keep the cells intact, but I just use my unchlorinated filtered water. Finally, gather the spirulina into one area so it's easier to scoop out of the mesh. I don't bother squeezing too much water out because it's already pretty condensed and I'm not trying to dry it. And that's pretty much it. This harvest gave me about one teaspoon of spirulina for just under one liter of solution. That's pretty great considering it's winter time where I am and I don't use any extra equipment to grow my spirulina. If I wanted more yield, I could buy a heater, light, timer, and an air pump. But with the basic kit from bluegrownlife.com, I'm able to convert CO2 in the air into oxygen and get this wonderful superfood without any extra electricity or soil. And that's all it takes to harvest spirulina. I'll add a little bit of nutrients back into the solution for the spirulina I took out, allowing for continued growth. Most people say to add half the weight of spirulina you took out with nutrients. So if you harvested one teaspoon of spirulina, you should add half a teaspoon of nutrients into the solution. This isn't very exact and completely depends on your nutrient makeup, so make sure to calculate accordingly. Be on the lookout for a short taste test video where I review my harvest. That's it for today. If you liked the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you.